So I'm sure all of us have heard of the idea of setting SMART goals. So this means specific, achievable, measurable, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely goals. And as much as this is a good framework for setting goals, I think it glosses over one key thing. And this is whether we're actually in control of the outcomes that we're measuring. So let me just illustrate this with an example. Let's say that by 31st January, I hope to have 1,000 subscribers. And yeah, I think that pretty much fulfills all five criteria. But what makes me sort of uncomfortable is the fact that this goal is sort of based on an outcome that's not really within my control. So you see, I can't actually control if 1,000 of you will enjoy watching my videos, click subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment, wow, I like your videos. Like, that's totally not within my control at all. And honestly, if you set a goal based on an outcome that you can't really control, isn't that just gambling? I mean, in this case, the payoff wouldn't be money, but it would just be the dopamine hit you get from achieving whatever arbitrary number you set for yourself. And I guess sort of quantifying all of these outcomes, especially when they're not within our control, just gives us a false sense of security. So I attended a talk once, and the speaker said something that I really can't get out of my mind, and it goes something like this. If you have a good process and bad outcomes, that's a fluke. But if you have a bad process and good outcomes, that's also a fluke. Only when you have a good process can you increase the probability of you having good outcomes. So sure, if you set smart goals, I mean, you can definitely check whatever metric you want. But how are you to know that this is an anomaly and it doesn't fall into these first two cases that I just talked about? So what I propose to set better goals in 2024 is something a little bit more nuanced. I mean, sure, you can still follow the smart goals framework. But I think rather than measuring things that are based on the outcome, we should measure things related to the process. So instead of saying, oh, I want 1,000 subscribers, maybe I'll just say, oh, maybe in January I want to make 10 videos that I'm proud of and I would willingly show to my friends and my family. Maybe instead of saying, I'll deadlift four plates by the end of the year, maybe I'll change this to, oh, I'll go to the gym five times a week. And maybe instead of saying, oh, I'll score an A or 75% for all my finals, Maybe I'll change this to, oh, I'll just study for three hours every day without fail. And yes, I know some of you watching this might ridicule this as participation trophy mentality. And yeah, I totally understand that. But let me just leave you with this thought. As cliche as it sounds, showing up really is half the battle. And there are definitely some mornings or afternoons or evenings where you don't want to get out of bed, you don't want to drag yourself to school or to work or to the gym. But on these days, you still do it anyway. I think we just need to give ourselves a little bit more credit for that. And I guess at the end of the day, nobody else is keeping track of our goals besides ourselves. So why not just soften our mindsets a bit and make the entire process a little bit more encouraging and heartening? Because after all, we're in this game for the long run. And if we want to make it as sustainable as possible, and we want to do this for as long as possible, a little bit of encouragement and support from ourselves just really goes a long way. So yeah, happy new year. I hope you achieve your goals in 2024 and cheers. See you.